Okay, um, I wanted to show you what we're working on at the BE Trade Buying Group at the moment. Uh, if you go straight to our website, beetbg.com, log into the website and search for configurator on the search bar. This will give you our MeFlow Pump Group Configurator version 1.0. If you ignore the price at the moment, this isn't correct. We're going to work on a live pricing structure for this, but it's not currently available. If you select this, this is going to take you to this screen and basically go straight into it by clicking on Configure Manifold and Pump Groups. This will give you a step by step guide of your manifold that you're going to build. There are default selections already pre selected in the configurator. So, for example, it will start off with the eight way manifold. And this is what they call the black version, the black version of manifold. This is a flow and return distribution manifold. Flow and return are completely separated inside this manifold. If you choose a smaller manifold size, this will then delete position number four and D. And again, if you choose the four-way manifold, this will be will delete position three and C. So each pump group will need a flow and return connection. So on the eight-way manifold. There's an option to put eight pump groups on there. In the real world, you will need at least one flow and return from a heat source. So the maximum amount of pump groups that you can fit to an eight-way manifold is seven with one heat source flow and return into the same manifold. Okay, so if we choose, for our example today, we're going to use the six-way manifold. And currently it's black, which is the separate flow and return. This is a drop down, so you can actually choose the orange. The orange version is the low loss header version. So this would, on selection, would change the graphic to show you that you've selected the orange version rather than the black flow and return manifold. If we go back to the black version, and the next step is the boiler guard. Now, typically, a lot of times, a low loss header is connected to a flow and return distribution manifold for pump groups. The boiler guard is what basically Flamco call a low loss header. This boiler guard will bolt straight onto the distribution manifold, and there's different positions available. The short leg of the boiler guard always connects to a flow position. So depending on which way range you orientate the boiler guard, there's different positions you can put it on the manifold to ease installation to suit. This example would be piped to the left for a return. Um, we can choose a different example where it's going to be piped to the right. If we put it in this example, because you're piping to the right, Pump group C is now no longer available. Put it into position four. Pump groups B and C are no longer available. This is pretty tight to get this pipe work away, so this doesn't always make sense to put it in this position. If you choose position five, pipe away to the right, this will give you the maximum amount of pump groups you can fit to a six way manifold. One, two, three four or five pump groups. So black distribution manifold, flow return manifold is connected to a low loss header boiler guard. If I go back and actually change the distribution manifold to an orange version, it makes no sense to connect a low loss header to a low loss header. So the boiler guard is then changed to a black version.
this would then select put position five in there um, a black flow and return boiler guard connected to an orange type manifold giving you five pump root positions on your distribution manifold okay let's just reset that a second so I'm going to take it back to the black version and I'm going to choose position position 5 for the boiler guard to give me the maximum amount of pump groups and I'm also going to choose the size of boiler guard default is DN25 or 1 inch on this particular range you can have option you've got it to DN32 inch and a quarter so if you choose inch and a quarter the graphic doesn't actually change but it would be noted if you were ordering ordering this from us Okay, so now we've got our options in step four. Group C no longer exists because the boiler guard is taking up this position. We have another look at the actual graph here. We'll start with position one and select it in our list. This will give me a list of options for different pump groups I can put into position one. Each pump group would be a flow and return to an independent circuit. So if it's a radiator circuit, underfloor heating circuit, tower rail circuit, um, whichever, whichever pump group suits your application, I'm going to choose an unmixed circuit for position one. This is then going to show me it connected to the manifold flow and return coming away from it for that circuit. This will also bring up different options. If I scroll down, I'm going to go for the DN25 version and I'm going to go for some fill and flush valves. And I'm not going to worry about the overheat stat or the plate separation at the moment. So, this is basically now supplied with a fill and flush valve, which are connected just after the pump group. The therm thermometers shown on the pump groups are also valves, they're globe valves, so they're, they're um, literally quarter turn valves. So you can isolate this circuit here and here, and then you can drain fill flush from these two points. Okay, so that's position one complete. I'm now just going to go back to my list and I'm going to go to position two. So position two, I'm going to choose a mixed pump group, just a basic mixed pump group. This will show the pump group. It doesn't have the actual actuator connected to the mixer. This is a mixed pump group without the actuator. I'm going to connect to it again. And this is then going to give me more options. Lots of different actuators available. Uh, this is just showing two. Standard actuator, 20, 230 volt, um, motor open, motor close. This is used when connecting to Beesman, Baden boilers, for example. Or this is the NWR3 Flamco version. This is a standalone weather compensation, um, weather compensated actuator, which as an inbuilt screen for making all your selections here, setting the curve and different time parameters, temperatures and everything from the screen itself. So if I choose this as my option for the actuator, this is now going to show me actuator on position two on the pump group. And it's also going to include a, oops, a, Flow temperature sensor, which is needed, and an actual temperature for the weather compensation. Okay, come down to position three, and I'm going to choose another mixed pump group, for example, and another NWR3, 
This is then added another flow temperature sensor for this pump group. This outside sensor, you only need one outside sensor. This will basically re relay the information to each actuator on this system. I'm also, because I'm going to fit this, imagine this one is fitted to an under four heating circuit, I'm going to add to that one a overheat protection stat and the fin and flush valves. Come back up again. So this is now showing me the overheat stat and the fin and flush valves. This is basically an anti tamper proof stat. This is pre selected temperature. If the flow temperature measured here is higher than this temperature, it will basically interlock this pump. So it won't allow any more heat into that circuit. Um, just for neatness, I'm going to go back to pump position two. And also select fill in flush valves for that position. So then I've got full control over each circuit. Okay, coming down to the next level, I've got positions A and B. If we imagine that position A is to feed a heating circuit in a separate annex, in a separate building, um, I'm going to put a weather compensated circuit to it on position A. Position A. Choose a mixed pump group. Flow and turn coming away from it. You'll notice now that the actual, because the pump group is upside down, the pump has been rebuilt to suit. The flow is now on the other, on the other side because you've, you've inverted the pump route 180 degrees. Um, this one, because it's an annex, I want to separate it with a heat exchanger version. So basically this, if I select the actuator again, okay. So this is getting quite big now, but we'll see we'll see the version, the finished version in a second. This circuit is a mixed pump circuit feeding a weather compensated calculated temperature to the plate. The plate is 100% separated but taking heat to the annex. This means that the annex could be drained down, worked on for maintenance, and you'd be still operate um, the system without any problems. Position B, for example, there we're going to say doesn't exist, so we're not actually going to use that one, so I'm just going to blank it off, and then that disappears. So that, in effect, is my design. I'm going to preview the configuration. It will now calculate exactly what, or it's going to show me exactly what that arrangement looks like. And you can go back and edit options if you need to. And there we go. Give you another example. If I refresh all this and remove it, go back to the start again, and we're going to configure a pump group. This is one. Let me configure the whole thing back again a minute. So, just going to refresh. Okay. This is one for Alec. Um, he recently has purchased a slightly unusual arrangement, but it will work. Um, we've been discussing it for a few days now. Basically, what he's got is a four way manifold. He's gone for the orange version. And he's going to hang the distributor upside down. At the moment, the, we cannot turn the distribution bar upside down, so we're just going to try and emulate what Alex has got. 
He's not had it. He's not got a border guard. He's not interested in that. He has DN25 and position one. He is going to connect firm turn. So firm turn into the manifold. Uh, position two is going to be blank. No pump group in position two. And then we've got in group A, unmixed. Group B, unmixed. This is it. So this is, I believe, if I go to the preview configuration, basic setup, I believe the border is above here. So the flow comes down to the distribution manifold and we're pumping away, downwards away from the distributor, the manifold, which is a low loss header in this version. And there we go. Okay, hope that's been helpful. And um, if you need any more advice, just give me a ring. Thanks a lot.